Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 19. Tonight, we're going to discuss the documentary The Prince and the Pedophile that was just released in England. We've discussed this on some of the earlier drops, and I told you as soon as it came out, we would discuss it a little bit, so here we are. Thankfully, thankfully for us, Refinery29 has a nice article that goes into it about the seven things that we learned from the documentary. So this will be the only article for tonight, considering there really isn't much going on as far as news in the case breaking. So we'll get it. we're going to stick with this one article, and we'll get to it and see where it takes us. <clears throat> the relationship between Prince Andrew and the late disgraced former financier Jeffrey Epstein has been revealed in an explosive new Channel 4 documentary. Dispatches, the prince and the pedophile thoroughly investigates the relationship between the two men, delving into the reasons why a member of the British royal family would choose to keep ties with a convicted sex offender. The documentary also looks closely at their connections and interviews those close to Epstein as well as exploring how the relationship came about. Jeffrey Epstein was found dead in his prison cell earlier this year while awaiting trial for sex trafficking charges, and Prince Andrew stands accused of having sex with, that, with the then 17-year-old Virginia Roberts Joffrey, one of Epstein's accusers. Reporter Kathy Newman explores Epstein's British connections, which include Andrew and Robert Maxwell's daughter, Gis Lane, as well as Peter Mandelson and Prince Andrew's ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson. The documentary elicited much reaction online in the UK after it aired last night. Some on Twitter are criticizing the fact that there has been so little media coverage of Prince Andrew's friendship with Epstein, with more attention given to the Duke and Duchess of Sussex South African trip and interviews on ITV. Others have pointed out the notable differences between the treatment of Meghan Markle and the criticism she receives compared to Prince Andrew. These are the seven things we learned from the documentary. Number one. Jeffrey Epstein had 13 phone numbers for Prince Andrew, including a direct line to his computer's modem. All right, so we were, we've covered that before, that revelation we've definitely discussed. And it was funny to me because I brought up the fact that why would you need a phone line to a computer modem? What does, what, what, what would that have to do with anything? Why would you need that? I'm still at a loss. I wouldn't, I don't understand what the purpose of that is. Anyway. In the documentary, private investigator Mike Fiston had been looking into Epstein's alleged crimes as part of this case and discovered that Epstein had 13 telephone numbers on which to contact Prince Andrew. A telephone contact book was found in Epstein's Palm Beach residency, which included, which included a line for the royal at Buckingham Palace. Fiston said, you could take, for instance, if looking at the section in London, you could pick out the Duke of York, which is Prince Andrew. And when you look at that, under Duke of York, it shows Buckingham Palace, London. He has 13 phone numbers to contact the Duke, and these numbers went everywhere. Wood Farm, Sunning Hill numbers, the palace, his home number, his home email. He even had a phone number to his modem, I guess to call into his modem. Number two, Sarah Ferguson had also been friends with Jeffrey Epstein for at least seven years. Channel 4's analysis of Epstein's telephone records found that the Duchess of York and Epstein's friendship had, con had continued for at least seven years. A telephone note dated 25th January 2005 was a message from HRH Duchess of York, Sarah Fergie, which said she is expecting your call. 3. Jeffrey Epstein was close enough to Prince Andrew to receive an invitation to the Queen, the Queen's Dance of the Decades at Windsor Castle. Alright, so that's definitely something that needs to be blasted around everywhere. You can't claim to have a distant relationship with somebody... Well, at the same time, they're, they're being invited to Windsor Castle for the dance of the decades with the Queen and the rest of the royals and, and tell me that you're not close with Jeffrey Epstein. He was definitely part of Andrew's inner circle. Andrew was part of his inner circle. Now, the question is why? We all know on this show what I think. I think that he was an asset. I believe that he was intelligence. I believe that he was running an operation, a honey trap operation, a honey pot operation. He was looking to entrap people, ensnare people, Jeffrey Epstein was, in sexual blackmail cases so that he would have power over them so that they would do what him and his handlers wanted them to do. What else could it be? Why else would these people be hanging out with him? He can't be that charismatic. 
I, I mean, that can't be the case, right? There's plenty of charismatic people on the planet. Why would people gravitate to Jeffrey Epstein? Is he the only person that had an island? Doesn't Richard Branson have an island? Hmm. In June 2000, Epstein was invited to the Queen's Dance of the Decades party at Windsor Castle. According to Daily Mail royal correspondent Richard Kay, the Queen hosted one of the grandest parties she'd had at all, at, at all during her reign at Windsor Castle. They called it the Dance of the Decades, and it was to mark, this, mark the, the Queen Mother and I think William's 18th and Andrew, of course, had been 40 that year too. So he was implicitly involved in all this, and he invited Ghislaine Maxwell and a man called Jeffrey Epstein. <clears throat> Prince Andrew would stay with Epstein on occasion over 12 years, sometimes spending days on end with him. Channel 4 examined the flight logs for one of Epstein's private jets and found that on 16th April 1998, Jeffrey Epstein met Princess Sarah Ferguson and kids on the ground in Nassau in the Bahamas. In February 1999, Prince Andrew himself appears for the first time flying into the Virgin Islands. A few days later, he flies out again with J.E., Jeffrey Epstein, G.M., Ghislaine Maxwell, and a number of other people. A number of other people, huh? Who are these people? Why are there document, uh, documents on who these other people are? You see, these sort of reports just touch the surface of what's really going on and I'm hoping that we can get more in depth here and that's what I'm doing if we continue to read all of these articles over different articles but covering the same exact topics but it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and deeper we have refer references uh, references to go back to because we've been covering it the whole time it's not just one random article to us it's a continuation of a story I guess so that's why we do these daily drops and it's 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 a great resource for us to go back and look at and see exactly where we've come and how this story this story has grown since the time we've started number five Prince Andrew's reputation had already been called into question according to the documentary Prince Andrew was once praised for his public service in the Falklands War however he was also known as Randy Andy, the Playboy Prince, because he had a series of high-profile girlfriends and was mocked on the satrical program Spitting Image as the prince who can't say no. Alright, so, we know that Prince Andrew has also had other people say that he has been improper towards them. We also know that Virginia Roberts, Joffrey, is very credible, and I find it hard to believe that Prince Andrew was not involved with the defense he has shown and given us and the the basic just ignoring it basically not facing it head on like somebody who should be enraged that they would even be caught up in this instead he he cowers behind veiled statements and canned statements and prepared statements look we're not buying it Prince Andrew we're not buying it, and I don't think the English people are either. I think the English people are especially, especially looking for answers from you, sir. Number six. Prince Andrew continued his friendship with Epstein even after he was arrested for alleged sexual offenses. Prince Andrew flew from uh, Luton to Edinburgh with Gis Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein, Epstein's closest associate, even after Epstein was arrested for sex offenses. This is a flight log for Epstein's jet for the... For, for the 1st September 2006. Epstein himself isn't present, but Prince Andrew flies from Luton to Edinburgh with Ghislaine Maxwell and a couple of other friends. Again, a couple of other friends. What other friends? Epstein had been arrested six weeks previously on charges of soliciting prostitution. So that makes a lot of sense. You know, this guy gets nailed for prostitution. So what the hell? Let me just go hang out with him. With uh, Prince Andrew just says, what the hell? I'll go hang out with Maxwell and I'll hang out with, uh, you know, Epstein still. No big deal. What's, come on. How could that be bad for me? I mean, it's, it, they're only trafficking human beings and abusing other human beings. I mean, what's the big deal? I'm a prince. I can do whatever I want. Again, the two-tier justice system is so disgusting. How dare they? And and then how dare he smear these victims 
and, and and not give them their chance to face their their the the person who supposedly abused them. If he's innocent, he should be having a much much more vigorous defense of himself. Number seven, Prince Andrew allegedly had an orgy with Jeffrey Epstein and nine girls. Nine girls. The documentary documentary reexamined the court papers, which claim Epstein and Andrew had an orgy with Epstein's accuser, Virginia Joffrey, and eight other girls. In evidence to a Florida court four years ago, Miss Joffrey wrote, the, th- the third time I had sex with Andy was in an orgy on Epstein's private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. I was around 18 at the time. Epstein, Andy, approximately eight other girl, young girls, and I had sex together. The other girls all seemed and appeared to be under the age of 18 and didn't really speak English. Epstein didn't really speak English. Epstein laughed about the fact that they couldn't really communicate, saying that they are the easiest girls to get along with. This guy's just... Like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that I want to know everything he knows about the people he was involved with, it would have been one of the best days ever to find out that this guy was no longer on Earth. Because he's not that it's not even a human being. That's just a, a bag of meat walking around just just committing all sorts of atrocities. And that's what they were, folks. Atrocities. The things he 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 was accused of and the things he did, complete atrocities. A, a disgusting a more disgusting individual, I don't know if there has been one, that I have covered. The documentary also claimed that medical records from New York Presbyterian Hospital show that Miss Joffrey was admitted on July 9, 2001 after three weeks of vaginal bleeding. Buckingham Palace said in a statement about Prince Andrew, any suggestion of improp- impropriety with underage minors is categorically untrue. It is, emph- it is emphatically denied that the Duke of York had any form of sexual contact or relationship with Virginia Roberts Joffrey. All right. So when I post this link in the source area there where I usually post it in the description, there's a link here for you to click inside of the article that will take you to watch the documentary. So you could check it out there. You could read the article. And you can, like usual, come to your own conclusions because I, everybody knows where I stand, especially with Prince Andy, Prince Handy, Prince Handy Andy. This guy is, he has a lot to answer for. He needs to really, 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 really stop with the games and answer some hard, hard, hard questions because what he has given us so far, it's offensive to not only us but imagine what to his victims how they must feel you know it's it's not a game these people think it's a game they think they can get away with whatever they want they think they could do whatever they want because history has shown that they can but when is enough enough when do we when have we had enough when do we get up when do we overturn the chess table when do we overturn the card table when do we just say that's it we've had enough of your of your of your deviousness we've had enough of your modern day enslavement because that's what they do they enslave us their their propaganda on the media on the TV their propaganda in print media you know and the constant gaslighting that they they just bombard us with on a daily basis. Enough is enough. The people have had enough. And I'll tell you what. We've sat back and we've really taken it on the chin as a population for a very long time because we've been comfortable. But I think this is one sucker punch too many. I think it's time for us to not turn the other cheek. I think it's time for us for people to be held responsible. When is anyone ever going to be held responsible? Nobody's ever held responsible for anything anymore. Nobody was held responsible for 9-11. Nobody's held responsible for the Iraq war. Nobody's held responsible for, for anything anymore in this country. There's no self-responsibility. There is only blame. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, enough is enough. Enough is enough. The federal government needs to do their job. They need to arrest the people that were involved with this. And at the very least, at the very least... Questions must be asked. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's episode. I'll see you tomorrow night. And for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, thanks for coming by. And those that have been around since the beginning, love having you guys around. Love the emails. Keep them coming. Until next time.